platforms and uh, it may be a website it may be a linkedin account it may be a facebook account it may be a whatsapp it may be a youtube it may be a podcast it may be a blog it may be e newsletter i request all the participants in great numbers ask me question in this session even you can start any query of yours regarding all these to post here in the chat box i will address all the queries during my deliberation itself so i can see the chat also so if you have any query i have open chat box right now with me you can ask me any query during your uh, during my deliberation relating to website relating to linkedin relating to facebook relating to instagram relating to whatsapp in relating to youtube podcast blog e newsletter whatever you want to ask you can ask it's a two way deliberation rather than one way deliberation so let's start with website we all know Website guidelines have been issued by ICA. Every practicing member can have its own website. The name of the website will be as resemble as to the firm name. We cannot have a website name in any other manner. The name of the website should be as near as. from after that the whole website should be on pull mode it should not be on push mode nothing could be forced to see if someone visits our profile we need to assure that the person who is visiting our website Could visit the website to his own discretion rather than our discretion. We are no one to force him what he should see or he should not see. He should choose on will select what he want to see. If he want to see about us, he will click on about us. There will be a complete detail of our form and its services. If we want to see about partner, he may click about partner. Within about partner, each name of partner will be there. He may click on partner, design partner uh, details, all details relating to that partner, his area of expertise, and all whatever you want to give you give in that particular pop up. You cannot directly give anything at the base of the website. So the same thing pop up will be required there also. Then website should not have any other link of any other website other than departmental website other than ICI website. We should not have any other website address. But right now it has been introduced that from our website we can have. our linkedin our facebook our instagram our whatsapp our youtube whatever you want to give give the contact in the contact details you can give all these hyperlinks with your website and on all these accounts you have you can give website address no where else we can publish our website address we can publish the website address at our news uh, at at our any of the accounts whether it is on linkedin whether it is on facebook whether it is on instagram whether it is on whatsapp whether it is on youtube podcast whatever one if you want to give you can now question comes for website there can we code associate consultant name mentioned on a website of from of chartered accountant along with their photograph so friends it is our website 
we cannot give detail of any other person on this website. ICAI is of a view that name of associated consultant cannot be mentioned on website of the form of that accountant along with their photograph. You can have only your form name and your form photographs. That is it. No associated chartered accountants photographs are allowed on website. So this is one thing we should be very careful about. It is our website, nothing to do with any other associate accounting firm or any other associated firm name, unless and until it is your registered network with the ICA. Can a member mention position held in past or present in ICAI as elected representative of Central Council or elected representative of Regional Council or elected representative of branches? So we have all dignitaries with us right now who all are having positions either at Central Council or at Regional Council or at any branches. So can we mention all these positions in our website? Institute says that whenever you are mentioning about your partner in your website on a pop-up, there, whenever we are giving details of our partners, we can provide all these details no problem in that. You were ex-president, you were ex-chairman, you can write, you are present chairman, you are present president, you can write. You can write about this in your website, but only at full request. Not so that anybody if opens a website, the website itself shows that he is EIRC chairman or he is EIRC secretary or he is, it is the Dibrugar branch chairman. No, we cannot have that kind of uh, presentation at website. That should only be on full mode. If someone goes, on, goes to my website, he clicks my about partners, he clicks about the partner, he wants to know detail about the partner, he will get the detail which is given there at website. So it is very really clear right now that members may mention their position which is held in part or held at present. There is no point in that. Now the next thing is very important. Whether employee's name and photo can be given. Liquid by we can give employee names and photograph, but they all will be in passport style photograph. We can give employee detail, employee name, we can give everything. Website related query number three, whether display of office infrastructure picture in excess of passport style is permitted to display at firm's website. Some firms have started displaying their world-class infrastructure. Now, ICAI is not of opinion that you can display such kind of infrastructure at website. We have allowed you passport style photograph. So, passport style photograph is allowed for person, not for furniture. Passport style photographs are not allowed for infrastructure. Some people say that we are giving infrastructure photo, but in passport size. Sir, we have not said passport size photograph. We said passport style photograph. And passport style photograph will always be of a person, not of furniture or picture or any other thing. So, it is not allowed in the website to demonstrate about what kind of world-class world 
teachers you have. Some persons may argue why this ban is there if we have world class furniture and pictures and facilities. Why we are not allowed to show them? We, we are not kind of jewelers. We are not kind of retailers. We are chartered accountants giving best services. Services have nothing to do with the infrastructure directly. Indirectly, they may support the quality of services. But directly, quality of services cannot be there by infrastructure. By same infrastructure, let me tell you. By having an infrastructure, we need to have a good infrastructure to provide quality services. But we need not to show this because out of 3 lakh 50,000 chartered accountants, right now about 70 to 80,000 chartered accountants are there who are in their initial phase of developing the practice. And they do not have that much kind of infrastructure which we have. And by narrowing down this particular scope of practice, it is not easy for them to get that kind of infrastructure which the seniors are having. So, a disparity should not be there between the senior members and the junior members and all that institute is not allowing any kind of displaying of infrastructure at a level because at this juncture we need equality. So very nicely uh, given by ICI, these questions which I have prepared here are based on the discussions which have been going on various groups of uh, typical standard board. They are going to publish soon, but, but uh, mind it very carefully. The opinion of ICA regarding this website is this. Next one is, whether specification of achievements of one like amount of fund raised, number of entities for which involved in IPO listing, etc. Sometimes it happens that some of the websites, we have visited some of the websites and they are on the scanner of ICI. They are showing client's name. Display of client's name at website is prohibited. Again, no displaying of website, no displaying of client's name or brand name should be there with website. That should be very clear to everyone. No one can show list of clients. No one can. Second, we cannot display the fees which we are taking. Neither display of fees will be there, nor display of clients will be there. And further, we cannot advertise our professional attainments that we have raised funds for so many groups or we are raised. So we may. Uh, hello. So, whether specification of achievement of the firm like amount of fund raised, number of entities for which, uh, which is involved in IPO listing, etc., it is not possible at website. If someone started showing that we have done all these IPO and writing the name of the companies like these IPOs, we have. So, institute doesn't want it that a person who had achieved a higher price at his own Hard work. Should stop hard work and start marketing for that. The whole practice is built on world of world of mouth, and definitely the practice will always again, always in future, should be grown on world of mouth rather than of having these all marketing gimmicks. So I see AI is not of any sort of opinion that specification of achievement of the firm for fundraising, number of entities for which involving IPO listing, etc. not allowed at all. 
So we have to be very careful about this. Whenever we are having our website, we should not show any client name. We should not show any professional achievement. Now it's, uh, it always happens. Use of artificial intelligent chatbots. We have so many uh, technological advancements in uh, our website. We have artificial intelligent powered chatbot. Uh, anyone can visit our website. He can ask question. Now see, let's let's have a simulation. If I type there, which is the best form in Kolkata? If someone comes and types that, uh, who are you? Now our chatbot reacts. We are the best form of Kolkata. We are the best form of Odisha. We are best form of West Bengal. We are best form of Guwahati. Um, you can't have that. Either. Answer from AI. Your artificial intelligence should be articulated in such a manner so that it should not promote any misconduct. We cannot have answers, pre-filled answers in the chat box, which will give an impression that our form is superior to another form. So one has to be very clear on that. You can have box and box, but while incorporating chat box in our website, the context which is given to the chat box or the contents which are given to the chat box for replying should not should also be within the guidelines of ICI. This is required under website guidelines. Next one. Can a client give review for me? Another point. Can a client, whether reviews given by client or any other person at firm's website or any third party portal relating to quality of service, testimonials? Reviews, these things allowed on website. No, sir. No endorsement, no testimonial. Any endorsement or any testimonial will going to advertise professional attainments, which is prohibited under clause numbers. They went to part first of the code of ethics. So it should be very clear right now here that you cannot have the kind of reviews and testimonials. It is not allowed to have reviews. It is not allowed to have testimonials. No one can uh, review us and then, uh, but obvious nowadays, uh, people, are start, people have started buying the reviews. Reviews can buy from market. There are some uh, review providers who will get money from you and they can give you paid review. So I see AI do not want to start a new facility for those who want to do some kind of misconduct. So they have banned it completely. No reviews can be given by client on even from website, not Google review, not Google website, and nothing, nowhere, nowhere, no client should give any kind of testimonial or any kind of review. Then comes whether hiring or marketing agencies for increasing the website visits to improve the ranking in search engine amounts to solicitation of client, yes. We cannot have search engine optimization. We can have search engine optimization, but with certain restrictions. We cannot pay for, we cannot pay for priority to the search engine. If you want to give Google that, please, uh, if anyone in uh, East country said, 
type something that he need a account account then somebody who paid for the sake of uh, visit improve visit definitely what will happen the first then will be shown by google will be that who had been paid to google ads so we should refrain ourselves for from paying such an amount to any agency for increasing the website visit artificially we can have organic growth of our channel organic growth of our website but we should refrain from such kind of if client give review on google how client can be prevented client cannot be prevented from giving google review but we are not there to promote their google review on our website they want to give google review they can give google google review anybody can give google review about me so google review about me may be available to anyone but i should not promote that google review at my website that is very important i should not give any linkage of that to my google review that is important so whether hiring of marketing agency for increasing the website visit to improving the ranking of search engine amounting to solicitation of client yeah it will be solicitation of client then come can we have apps another question see app is also kind of website which may be open at mobile but one thing should be very clear to everyone that in case of app that app will always be for the purpose of interacting with client and interacting with internal staff that app will not be interactive app with third persons anybody who can download the app can come to you and can demand for services and you can give services through app no 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 once a client is registered with you give him the app link so that he can upload his record to your server give him app for his facilities you cannot have an app to be uploaded at google market or apple market to download and use no it is for my own clients and for my own stuff i can have app with me then comes member in practice can they advertise their services on social networking websites i must say yes a member who is a chartered accountant in practice can advertise their services on social networking website you just have your own about of okay. suppose there is a website of yours and you have shown about us just copy that about us and you can post it anywhere on right about social networking websites as you are displaying about us in your website they are well within the guidelines set by icai copy that you can make that particular about us as linkedin profile you can make that about us as your facebook profile so you have a liberty to say everything about yourself 
just like as website you can give it at various platform but mind it council guidelines for advertisement should be applied council advert council guidelines for advertisement clearly mentions member should refrain showing them superior from others that is the basis of the guideline which is issued by icai then it comes whether a member in practice or a firm may give link of its website on social networking site so can i give my website name over facebook profile of mine over whatsapp profile of mine over linkedin profile of mine yes it is allowed a member in practice is allowed to provide link of its web page or social networking site but by this you should not soliciting people that is most important we cannot solicit people we cannot send mass sms or mass whatsapp or broadcast that if you have any tech problem visit www and your name we can't do that it is not allowed it is violation it is soliciting of client under the clause number 6 of the charter content uh, clause number 6 of part 1 to the charter content act 1949 so member in practice may give link of website on social networking site but not in a manner to solicit it that is most important whether members can share gst updates on modes like mass mail social media nowadays we are having so many updates one gst council decide something our whatsapp is full of with this update and mostly it is used by our colleagues who are contesting elections and in election time we have mass mails for updating the members abhi thoda sa kam hai right now it is quite diluted we don't have election local level it may be there so where a member can share gst updates on mode like mass mail or social media member can share gst updates mentioning him as a ca but mind it very carefully no one is allowed to include form name there no one is allowed to do that you want to give gst update give gst update daily i must say you want to upgrade people's knowledge upgrade people's knowledge on daily basis no problem at all but show the asim trivedi don't show asim trivedi partner of this 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 form form name should not be appear your name as a ca may appear no problem at all so a member can share gst update yes. gst what a income tax update law update any sort of update so any sort of update can be there no problem in that so a member can share gst updates 
mentioning himself as CA. No problem in that. Now, next one. Whether a member can publish, whether a member can publish testimonials, application letters, received appreciation letters received by him with regard to GST training assignments. Now it is very important that sometime it happens that we may kind of uh, we may have a kind of uh, appreciation letter from department some of us are taking uh, some of us are taking kind of uh, uh, seminars some of us are taking some kind of uh, GST seminars or income tax seminars or training programs and by having those training programs we may have appreciation letter from department we may have appreciation letter from uh, department we can get it from department appreciation letter but when having such an appreciation letter from department we cannot publish that appreciation letter from department to our website we cannot cannot publish it at our website not possible so one has to be very clear on this that if you got an appreciation that kind of testimonial to be shown at there is not at all allowed so such testimonials we cannot allow there now whether it is permissible for a member in practice to write his own blog on all issues whether professional or other way can i write a blog kya main ek blog likh sakta hu daily i want to write a blog not on professional matter i want to write blog on mahabharata gita whatever i want to i can so can i yes it is permissible for members to write blogs however the content of the blog should not be against the public policy and should not contain any matter that may bring disrepute to the profession blogs contain should not amount to soliciting of professional work or advertisement i can write blog i can write blog on professional matter as well as other matters also but i should refrain myself from blogging relating to a uh, different kind of uh, subjects i should not start writing on some cheap matter i should not start writing of on some matter which may be derogatory to the profession so we should not a question came to me in the chat box by abhas luhar uh, wala can a ca certified provisional balance sheet no. we cannot certify a provisional balance sheet abhas bhai we can only give a report that to in conformity with standard on assurance engagement 3400 so we cannot certify provisional balance sheet second whether a ca logo allowed to be printed on letter heads visiting cards with photo ca logo which is made by icai ca and that green pick 
is always allowed to be printed on your letterhead, to be printed on your visiting card, but you cannot have your firm's logo. You can never have your firm's logo to be printed anywhere. Firm ka logo nahi ho sakta. CA logo is permitted. Visiting card. And you cannot have visiting card with photographs. Not allowed. Now, the next one is, uh, this is something very uh, new, which has been recently uploaded to by ICA recently been uploaded by ICA and what happened is in WhatsApp world what misinterpretation carried over is there now a form of capital accountants may have on a, an account on social networking website where they may mention their name and other contents in accordance with their driving guidelines. A member in practice may have an account, an account on networking website wherein he represents himself as a proprietor or a partner of the firm. The contents of the same set of websites shall be in accordance with website guidelines. Firm of member may give link of his website or web page that may or may be on social media that are explained. A member, whether in practice or in service, may maintain an account on social networking website in his personal capacity. Besides content of personal nature, following contents pertaining indirectly to members' professional domain may also be mentioned on such website. If it is my personal website as a Seem Trivedi, my, my personal Facebook page as a Seem Trivedi, and I want to update an audit update or a code of ethics update over there is it allowed to me to share these contents at my facebook page or my whatsapp status yes you can give videos of educational nature you can upload and provisional ethics uh, professional ethics compliance are to be there no firm name should be involved over there. So we should not involve any consult of form name over there. Member may post content on website which helps the profession to grow in perception of the world and contribute towards enhancement of reputation using expert knowledge in respect of specialization to enrich discussion, have solved problems and promote learning ideas sharing. Whatever jnana ka prachar prasar aapko chitra karna hai, aap kibye, apne naam se kibye, with your own name, sree bhi laga li ji aage, koi dikkat nahi hai, but, kindly, do not show from name. It is clarified that, member can use prefix sree with his name on such social networking website. Member are expected to exercise professional discretion and utmost dignity while using the designation of chapter accountant or a prefix CA. On his personal account, on the social networking website for posting content or comments on the nature which do not fall under four mentioned above. So, members are expected to exercise professional discretion Chartered accountant notification key on his professional personal account and on social media, whether peer review certificate, it must be accept audit of listed company, new rules are effective from April 22 onward. Uh, I'll, I'll just give me your mail account. I'll give, send query to this. This query is quite long and we are at code of ethics right now, that's why. So, just mail me, I'll show, I'll give you personally, asim3vdc at gmail.com, I'll definitely address your answer. Now, as a member of Extreme Institute, it is not appropriate to post content comment on social media networking website using word search, word caricature or which are derogatory non-confirmative with dignity of profession or portrayal of the profession. 
Therefore, it is advised to strictly avoid posting such content or comments with designation of chat account and or prefix CA. You have to. So, important is that suppose it happens. This is social media right now, and what is going in country is a very different. I am a Hindu, but now showing Hindu. Being a Hindu at social media is sometimes forced on me. They call me a Hindu. I say I'm a Hindu. Sure. Now, if I have some religious agenda, or if I belong to BJP, so I must show that I'm BJP. If I am Congressy, I must show that I'm Congressy. Now, important is if I am running my political agenda, or I am running a religious agenda that has nothing to do with the profession of chartered accountancy. While I am posting that those kind of posts, whenever I am posting those kind of posts. We should, we should think on it that whether to fix CA is needed over there. If I am protesting against something which happened, we have so many posts which may be very much in personal nature. It's not required to put CA name before there. Nothing is required to have. That is very important. One has to be very clear on that. Uh, Asim ji, yeah. Uh, uh, I was just wondering that uh, CA prefix is allowed in in place uh, with the name of every chartered accountant. Yes. So, so so in my personal view uh, i am just uh, uh, clarifying it from you uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, i had not gone through the provision uh, so what i am trying to tell when i am uh, i am chartered accountant i am chartered accountant so i had allowed instead of mr i can use ca yeah so that is the purpose uh, that Instead of Mister or Misses, I can write C A C A Asim Tribedi C A Nitesh Kumar. Yeah, yeah. So it is just social media. Whether uh, I belongs to Muslim or whether I belongs to Christian, whether I belongs to Hindu, there is my Facebook page where I I named it as a C A Nitesh Kumar, or I had formed a group where I name it C A. Uh, Nitesh more groups or something else. So in that group, in the name of C A Nitesh more, I am posting so many uh, 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 Muslim related because I am. If I am Muslim, I am Muslim related. I will post, or if I am Christian, Christian related, I will post, or if I am Hindu, Hindu related, I will post. So I think uh, where uh, the act or rules prohibit me in posting such uh, 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 such things, I I am instead of Mister, I am using CA. Sir, what happens is my argument is yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm coming to that. Why institute that came out with this that you should see this line? I'm highlighting here. I'm highlighting the line itself. Look at this line. A member of the esteemed institute is. It is not appropriate to post content comments on social media or networking website using word or caricature, which is derogatory or not in conformity with the dignity of the profession as a result of negative portrayal of the profession. Look, if I am having a Personal agenda against BJP, or personal agenda against Congress, or personal agenda against Makapa, whatever it is. 
So that personal agenda, I am going to any, I am going to put certain allegations over certain politicians. Now, if we four, five, seven, eight, ten chartered accountants posting a particular allegation against a political party, that political party may have an opposition. Now, how chartered accountants certainly is against us? It is not so. Suppose I am in a BJP ruled state. So I am supporting BJP wholeheartedly. And I am posting for BJP agenda throughout the whole country. My all chapter departments have started doing of my chapter departments. And they are all going in Canada. It's not acceptable. They are all going in EMRC. Then they will happen that general government was certainly is supporting a political agenda, is supporting a religion agenda. That's why institute is asking us not to use your name. It, it, it is giving given in your from your WhatsApp account if it is gone, no, nobody is prohibiting you. But I am making a pamphlet. And if Nitesh Morsa is giving a pamphlet where a Congress agenda or a BJP agenda or something, else, so that designation of child accountant is not needed, you are missing. It's always there, no problem at all. That is the whole logic behind this particular uh, highlighted problem. Sometimes it happens that uh, some youngster, young child accountants, they involve themselves in certain kind of activities. We are not falling within the purview of the added accountants. For example, uh, Bollywood campaign. Now, as a chartered accountant, I, if I started campaigning, avoid or buy for person. Now, being a chartered accountant, why I should post if there is a template around, short run, post bell around, the cross around, finish as interview, clear as interview. Why are you involved in all these kind of things? With the mm -hmm. dignity of the position, see, see a position is nowhere related with this particular post. So that distinction is required. Nothing else. Everywhere we can quote our name as a CA, rightly said by Nitesh Murta, that Mr. and Mrs. instead that we have prefix as CA. Whether we are in practice, whether we are in service, we can use it. But why is that certain amount of discretion is needed that it should not be apprehended to anyone else that the sphere fraternity itself is uh, uh, part of some kind of an agenda. That, that is the concern of ICO at central level. That's what that's why they all came out with this particular thing. So uh, that is the point. Then comes YouTube videos and post podcast. All kind of YouTube videos you can have. I have my own channel, CSM Trivedi Talk. And that particular CSM Trivedi Talk YouTube channel I have created for youngsters, I have created for all the society, just to spread positivity. I, right now I am reading Aristotle, Aristotle. I am reading uh, Lao Tse, I am reading Rajneesh, I am reading uh, Bhagavad Gita, I am reading so many books and my morning um, activity. And if I find something very useful for that, I prepare a short video which is the same Trivedi and I post it on my channel. No, is it amount to professional misconduct? No way. It is not amount to professional misconduct. What but you are spreading positivity? You are you know, soliciting clients, they have nothing to do with Bhagavad Gita. Clients have nothing to do with Bhagavad Gita and everything, whatever I am sharing. I am sharing sometimes other people, I am sharing sometimes uh, other stories. So I am reading consistently Vedas and Upanishads, and if I get some, some very interesting thing to motivate people, to help people in a positive sense. I used to give such kind of videos. So, in that case, we cannot say that it is what? It is the kind of um, misconduct. No, it is not misconduct. So, while the videos are educational nature, yes, 
I am spreading videos of educational nature. Made uploaded on internet by members. No mistakes should be made out as a chapter complete. So, so no viewer of mine should have been thinking about my form. And whether I am practicing or not, even if it is not clear to anyone. But that particular video neither should contain my form name. Nor should contain my firm's website address. Nor should contain any uh, social media link of uh, my social media account. Form. So form has to be segregated clearly from my own. The in this profession since 1998 till 2023. These are 25 years of my profession. I have seen one thing that practice is developed on self skill and self development. Practice can be built by consistent performance, consistent, consistent knowledge, consistent learning, consistent execution, consistent hard work, they are always there for building a practice. Now, how social media can do that? Social media can project your real picture. And again, if you started doing posting your wrong picture before the public, false picture before the public, fake picture before the public, of your image that again gives them misconduct. So my firm belief about the firm, development of firm, going of practice, it basically is that word of mouth is the only satisfied client will bring more client that is true in all era. In all era, I must say, we cannot have marketing for patching the client. Even if you are showing anything to client, he is not going to satisfy. He is satisfied with your work only. So if he is satisfied with your work, he will bring more client. So client will bring more client. That is the only uh, mantra for developing a practice. Social media definitely going to project you and your achievement in a better manner, in a presentable manner, in a wide range manner, in an accessibility, ready to accessible information. That all supports us. But nothing inorganic can help us to develop our practice. So kindly refrain yourself from using social media in such a way which can create a problem to us. That is from my side relating to code of ethics for today. Any question if you have, you can ask me. I am ready to answer those questions. Otherwise, we should switch over to our code speaker uh, with the company law. Any question?
why we are not allowed to sign ITR acknowledgement? Sir, ITR acknowledgement is not allowed to sign by a chartered accountant because in Indian laws, a certified true copy can be certified only by gazetted officers and we are not gazetted officers by any means. That's why it is not allowed to us to have that kind of signature on ITR acknowledgement. Members are requested to post their queries in the chat box or they can unmute themselves also. Unmute and they can ask the questions, please. So if you have any question, you can ask uh, with the learned speaker, please. You can uh, unmute yourself or you can also uh, post in the ch chat box also. I have taken so many uh, VC meeting with EIRC. Now I would love to come face to face to meet EIRC uh, members in coming session. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, from the last two years, endless meeting you had taken. Uh, <laughs> and we also want you face to face. <laughs> face, -to -face or standards of auditing or cargo or anything else. No problem. Yes, yes, yes. We would also like to have you. Sir, banks even AGM level are pursuing client to get provisional balance sheet signed. <laughs> Say TAs are signing. No, if they say TAs are signing, you just ask their name and give it to Morji that he is signing that. No, <laughs> 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 can't sign, can't sign. Can't sir. sign, that is the law. Uh, sir, I am requesting one thing, sir. If there is possibility, uh, CA Institute should issue some kind of guidelines to the yeah. banks. As in these cases, we are in going into a rift with the client because the banks at very high position are pursuing the clients that your CA is uh, uh, just uh, doing some vague manner. They are rejecting because they do not want to do the signing and they are getting similar documents signed by other CAs. And it is like a, a conflict point of conflict with our own clients. Yes. So uh, I am just uh, advising you. Sometimes clients comes to us and it is like this also. It is not your own problem. It, it, it is everywhere. And in law itself, clients are coming. Uh, uh, one client came to me and, and had uh, a request to me. You can't believe that what, what was he was want to get signed from me that the bank was writing that kindly get the certificate from chartered accountant that he is my client. He is getting this loan from the bank and I personally certify that he is going to utilize this loan in that project only for which he is taking loan. Now, what? If you certify that my client is going to, then I ask him, Sir, I immediately need this of this letter. I just ask that bank. Otherwise, I am writing to head office of yours that this has been sent to me by your manager and it is again my ethics and it is again anyone's ethics. In which act, in which provision, in which circular of IBI, it is mentioned that I should sign this. I am, I am going against your man for forcing me to sign this. I am going to RBI. Straight forward, I am linking this particular attachment to RBI. I am going to give me explanation. He said, no, sir, I don't want any certificate of this kind. And no, I want now explanation either from your zonal manager or from your regional manager or from any RBI authority. Otherwise, I am going to find this with RBI with an explanation why this kind of, in which, under which circle the bank is asking this. And they kept silent, then they stopped doing that. We need to protest for our profession. We need to do that. Though council has intimidated to RBI, RBI within one month coming up with a circular to all the banks that these kind of certificate cannot be signed by charter companies. I feel I have taken up this matter with RBI. They want, they, they, are, they are asking for any of uh, such certificates. Anything certificate signed by a charter accountant. Why we should sign it? Just stay straightforward, 
Does anyone else have any more questions so that we can go ahead? I think, sir, uh, no one has any more okay. questions. No problem. Yes. Sir, uh, are you staying till the end or will you take leave? No, I'm, I'm taking leave. I have to join some other meetings. Thank you very much, Nitesh Bhai, uh, for inviting me. And, and now I, it seems that I'm part of the area. See those sitting in yes, CA. Yes, yes. You, we <laughs> feel you that uh, you are our, our member, our part of the IRC and... Uh, our, our uh, team, we always feel you and mm -hmm. once we uh, would also love that you come physically and uh, deliberate in EIRC that we will ensure this year, uh, uh, the, in the new year, we have uh, you at uh, Calcutta. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With this, may I request uh, Naveen uh, to kindly... Asim sir has very lucidly and uh, clearly explained the quotes so much relevant to each and every member. Around 225 members have gained from the knowledge sharing process. I thank C. Asim sir on behalf of each and every participant looking forward for more such seminars <coughs> and meetings with you. Thank you so much sir for Thank you very much. Thank you so much sir. Thank you. Heartful thanks for you. Now, I think we can move ahead with the next speaker. Uh, Jain Gupta, sir, please. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jain Gupta, sir? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, giving the consent. Uh, uh, may I now request you to kindly start your presentation, please? Thank you, Nitish ji for giving this opportunity to speak on the topic of ethics. Uh, this ethics, well, the, when I utter the word ethics, then I always uh, uh, think of Bhagavad Gita, which uh, teaches us about the principles of living and uh, uh, how a person should live. And I think the code of ethics also uh, re revolves around the same principles about uh, how we should work, how we should, uh, in, in the profession, how we should act. So this code of ethics is uh, was first introduced by the Institute in 1963, after 14 years of its existence, uh, and the first edition of Code of Ethics was published in 1963. Thereafter, till 2019, uh, 12 editions were uh, published, and it was reprinted eight times. Actually, Code of Ethics has more to do with the habits temperaments of the individuals. Ethics is science of morals in human conduct. It is a matter of conscience to differentiate between right and wrong. It is a state of mind. And it, it, a chartered accountant is supposed to uh, put public good above personal gain. And a chartered accountant should feel pride in service than personal gain. And all these things cannot come only by these seminars, workshops, and uh, letting the people know what is what. There are so many uh, guide guidance notes, statements, and standards issued by the Institute. And a lot of, firstly, this uh, 
professional misconduct has been included as schedule 1 and schedule 2 and they are the basic uh, uh, they provide the basic framework where the a chartered accountant can be booked to the as, as a guilty of professional misconduct so when we will be discussing about the professional code of ethics we will always keep in mind whether we are we can be booked uh, for professional misconduct under any of the schedule 1 and schedule 2 then what is schedule 1 and schedule 2 the schedule 1 is uh, uh, first schedule first schedule and second schedule first schedule relates to the professional misconduct which is not so grave in nature now and there is second schedule which is which is deemed to be a grave uh, uh, much more of much, much more importance in the uh, when the professional misconduct is concerned so the punishment for misconduct under first schedule is much more than the punishment under second, second schedule uh, first schedule is mu much lesser than the punishment under second schedule when if anybody is accused of uh, Mm, punishment under first schedule, then he can be reprimanded by the director discipline, or uh, he can be put uh, his name can be removed for three months. But when it is a violation under second schedule, then it is to be uh, ad adjudicated by the dis uh, director uh, disciplinary committee and the. Punishment to, and the punishment is up to uh, uh, removal of the members can be up to one year and the fine may be up to five lakhs. So these are the two uh, schedules where a member can be put, uh, uh, may be accused of professional misconduct. I think most of you must have gone through the two schedules, schedule one, first schedule and second schedule. Uh, it is part of the Chartered Accountant Act 1949. And uh, um, I think before we can discuss about the code of ethics, we should go through this first schedule and second schedule ourselves. Because I can narrate the clause wise what is contained in the first schedule and second schedule because code of ethics revolves around this first schedule and second schedule if we if we, if if any if uh, some if in code of ethics if something is uh, narrated which is not the subject matter of first schedule and second schedule then it doesn't carry any sense or any weight because it has been uh, uh, stated in Ramcharit Manas, So unless and until you have fear that you may book to, for professional misconduct under first schedule or second schedule, you need not study the what is the code of ethics. If you are fearless from the first second schedule and second schedule, then code of ethics is not meant for you. This uh, I can remember one short story that a person was having very bad times and he went to a uh, priest to some puja etc. The priest said that you give, give 25,000 I will make puja for you and your sunny you are hit by the sunny so sunny is uh, uh, this impact will be reduced so give 25000 i will perform puja so he said that i am i don't have 25000 so the priest revised the expenses to 5000 but he said that he is unable to give even 5000 then it was reduced to 1000 then again he uh, expressed his uh, inability then it was reduced to 100 he again reduced to inability then the priest said that if you cannot afford even 100, 
then you go and enjoy your life. Even Sunny cannot make any problem for you. So if you are not fearful about the first schedule and second schedule of the Chartered Accountant Act, then you need not go through the fact of, uh, schedule, uh, code of ethics. And now when we go through the various uh, misconducts narrated and listed out in first, second, first schedule and second schedule, there is one clause, which is part one, a first schedule, part four, clause two, and which reads, the bring disrepute to the profession or institute as a result of his action. Bring disrepute to the profession or institute as a result of his action. Now it is a very wide term. Whatever you do, if anybody has to uh, set settle scores with you, then he can go to the institute, file disciplinary case against you, that he is bringing disrepute to the professional institute, he is doing such and such. If you have uh, quarreled with your wife in your house, he can just have a recording, voice recording of that quarrel and send it to the institute with the complaint that it, you have bring, brought dis, disrepute to the institute. You are unbecoming of the member. So this, this clause, bringing disrepute to the profession or institute, as Nitish Moore was asking <coughs> the earlier speaker about that CA is only is a substitute of Mr. Then how does it matter? Why we should be so particular? In what context we are using the word CA? CA Jaina Ryan Gupta or CA Nitish Moore? Where we should put the CA? Where we should not put the CA? What is so sacrosanct about the word CA? When if it is substitute of Mr. like doctor, they are uh, using everywhere doctor. They are not uh, thinking that whether in the whether it is in the in relation to any professional work or any non-professional work like that. But we have been taught, we have been very skeptical whether any use of word CA can bring, bring disrepute to the profession. So myself as a personal, as a personal uh, uh, advice to myself, I always avoid using CA to myself because I don't know where and how it will be interpreted that I have brought dispute to the profession or, to, or the institute. Very necessary. You have a, uh, you are going on the highway and you uh, felt like uh, uh, having urinating and you just stop your car on the highway and somebody will just have a uh, snap of you and send to the institute that he has brought this circuit to the profession and institute. He is standing on the highway and doing like this. So it is a, and our institute may also admit that, uh, may also admit, uh, may also admit that the complaint and uh, start proceedings against uh, that particular member. So our institute, I have been handling the disciplinary cases of some of the members. And I have seen how our institute is so, talks about materiality, but when it is in the disciplinary cases, then materiality, materiality takes the back seat. They are behind even one or two PESA uh, uh, lapses and they put uh, your uh, life to hell. And I am astonished Then, when there are big issues are involved, then they keep mum and sit idle even for four years. And that is why Nafra, etc. have come into play. There we have to, but still, when we have to live with the institute, with the disciplinary mechanism, then we have to be very particular about uh, all these things. We have to be uh, See, when uh, police department is there, then and they take care that any criminal 
activity should not the law and order should be maintained but we are also aware that if any law and order problem arises to us if some miscreant uh, mishandles us then we can we may not rely on the uh, police department it may not come to our rescue but we when we unknowingly put ourselves find ourselves in the midst of uh, all these things then the police department can take us to right like so we have to uh, safeguard ourselves so that the disciplinary mechanism we are not within the disciplinary mechanism if we are disciplinary mechanism then god knows even if your uh, misconduct or your fault may be negligible or immaterial even then our issue can take it to the uh, to uh, and uh, uh, declare it to be the gravest misconduct and if your luck is good then your uh, uh, gravest misconduct may be uh, condoned or the disciplinary directorate can be um, uh put uh, uh, can sleep over the matter friends another another clause in the is the second schedule part 2 clause 1 is that uh, and it is applicable to all the members whether it is in service or in practice that contravenes any of the provisions of the act or regulations or guidelines issued by the council so if any member contravenes any of the provisions of the act or regulations or guidelines issued by the institute then he can be it can be treated professional misconduct now what is the guidance uh, guidelines so there are three types of guidelines issued by the institute one is guidance note another is statements and third is standards so there are three types three nomenclatures have been used about uh, this thing friends i am just narrating all these things whenever you feel like to interrupt me to ask any question etc then we can interact now about the guidance note there are so many guidance notes about uh, is industry specific or even for uh, tax audit related or any uh, say caro or any other uh, in that the uh, institute has come out with the guidance note and in that institute is sometimes uses the word that the chartered accountant may but this word may should be treated should be read as must because the what a uh, chartered accountant in practice has to mandatorily follow the guidance notes and even the chartered accountant in uh, uh, service has also to has also to follow the guidance note and the word may has to be read as must likewise statements have been issued by the institute on peer review and section 227 1a of the company act 56 and uh, there are several standards issued by the institute like uh, uh uh st statement of auditing then statement of uh, review engagements statement of uh, uh assurance engagements then standard on quality controls then accounting standards in as has been used then as as has been issued uh, which has been notified by for the companies uh, under uh, section 133 and then the accounting standards for non corporate has been uh, issued by the issue so all these guidance statements and standards have to be complied with has to be in toto friends this is the uh uh main background but now this as i stated earlier that the ethics started in 1963 and up to 2009 in 2009 11th edition was uh, published after 10 years in 
12th edition was published how this 12th edition was uh, this was influenced by the ifac international federation of accountants code of ethics and uh, it was adopted in the 2019 edition 12th edition code of ethics then international ethics standard boards was set up in 2018 and it was the current code of ethics this has been issued in three parts volume 1 2 3 volume 1 was issued in january 2019 and 2 and 3 have been issued in 2020 this new code of ethics has been applicable since 1 4 2020 means all the engagements after 1 4 will be covered by this code of ethics and uh, this code of ethics has been uh, uh, deferred for one year to make the members conversant with the changes in the code of ethics there are two you uh, terms used in this code of ethics new code of ethics the fundamental principles and the conceptual framework these two uh, words have been used um, by the um, the new code of ethics <clears throat> so i will just narrate briefly the new requirements which were not earlier which has been emphasized by the new code of ethics which was not so uh, prominent in the earlier code of ethics one was, one is the independence independence is part of the fundamental principles and what is independence it depends uh, past employment with the oddity may compromise with the independence non assurance services to oddity there are restrictions have been imposed by the new code of ethics then key audit partner should not be uh, should not have immediate family or close family of the oddity then the long association of oddity may also have the uh, familiarity threat or independence may be compromised then the auditor and oddity uh, may become related after mergers this this issue has been addressed in the new code of ethics then the share shares of fees of a client uh, more than 15% of the total fees if is it is coming from a client that may compromise the independence then the rotation if there is a non rotation of the uh, chartered accountant firm then it can affect the independence then uh for ca in services there uh, ca in ca ca in services also the um, there has been prescribed various uh, uh, issues which have to be uh, taken care of by the chartered accountants then the inducement inducement has been uh, inducement has been uh, defined or uh, uh, illustrated what is the corruption all these things have been uh, illustrated now this new code of conduct provides the robust framework because earlier it was based more on principles and revolving around first schedule and second schedule now it is uh, providing robust framework and uh, for advertising breach of code then management responsibilities we are uh, incorporating a paragraph in our audit report about management responsibilities so what to what extent it will be uh, uh, relevant for the auditor's report that has been clarified and non compliance of laws and regulations that has also been addressed by the new code of ethics now new code of ethics is uh, in uh, four parts part 1 speaks about the fundamental principles and conceptual framework which is runs from paragraph 100 to 199 then there is a part 2 engagement in services with related parties 
the paragraph 200 to 299 then part 3 engagement in public practice 300 to 399 then part 4a is independence standards for audit and review engagements paragraph 400 to 899 and paragraph 4b independence standards for assurance in engagements paragraph 900 to 999 so this is the broad framework of the uh, code of ethics now we can go one by one as part one fundamental principles and conceptual framework so this is paragraph 100 to 109 this is the main part and all other parts have been have taken the leaf out of this part one because all other parts are subsets of this main part and this narrates uh, the basic funda uh, fundamental principles since conceptual framework will which, which will be um, defining or narrating the scope of code of ethics now in fundamental principles there the first part is integrity In the integrity, when it is a, when we are uh, joining, we are, uh, we are uh, participating in various workshops, you will find that our uh, institute always emphasizes about the independence, integrity and excellence. So this is one of the three uh, basic things on which the institute uh, 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 propagates its uh, motto fair and truthfulness. What is integrity? Integrity is the fair and truthfulness of the uh, whatever certification or assurance services we are providing, then it has to be fair and truth. We have to provide the certification that uh, the account shows the true and fair view. So now there should not be any misrepresentation or omission or there should not be any vague or obscurity or misleading or negligence in uh, the, uh, the reporting. Sometimes you will find then in CARO report, we report that the provident fund dues are generally regularly being deposited. So this type of reporting may take you to the disciplinary mechanism because such type of CARO uh, uh, says that whether it has been regularly deposited or not. So you have to give in a very clear manner the reporting whether it has been regularly deposited or not and if it has not been deposited then you have to say that it has not been deposited it has been regularly generally reported this is this sort of reporting vague reporting will be will land you to the disciplinary mechanism then there should be objectivity means uh, the report should be objective it should not be subjective it should not be it should be unbiased or it should be free from undue influence or conflict of interest in uh, one of the case which uh, which which i was i was also concerned and uh, in which the old auditor i we were appointed the auditor and we found that the previous auditor was providing the consulting services for internal financial control and he reported on the internal financial control rules. It was in the case of a very big PSU. So when we uh, were appointed, we pointed out that you have uh, made the conflict of interest. So they were not agreeing and they were very adamant. So we uh, complained before the institute an institute has also come out with the prima facie opinion that it was compromise uh, conflict of interest and they had compromised independence. Now, 
another fundamental principle is the professional competence and due care means whenever any assignment is done by the chartered accountant auditor then he should have proper knowledge and skill about the area in which he is functioning suppose he is doing the audit of oil companies so he should know the knowledge he should have the knowledge suppose it is mining oil mining company so he should have the knowledge how the exploratory well are there developmental well well are there production wells are there dry wells are there so all these things and how they are uh, amortized how their cost is being booked how they are uh, capitalized so they should have knowledge about the industry and the nature of expenses he should have skill he should be diligent in some of the cases you will find <coughs> we were associated we found that uh, in the oil uh, uh, oil company crude oil company the contractors were appointed for production enhancement so we were wondering how the contractor can enhance the production why the company why company was incompetent to enhance the production themselves how the contractor can enhance the production which the company cannot so they, you should have the diligent and analytical about what is happening you have uh, the auditor has to apply the propriety aspect whatever is being done in the company it is the interest of the business of the company so that attitude has to be uh, always kept in mind the judgment uh, whenever the work is done then the judgment and awareness what is happening around who is doing what and the reporting should be timely it is not like that the uh, accounts has been given today and you are auditor is giving is not able to give report there on for months together now this uh, another uh, next item in the uh, fundamental principles is the confidential so the chartered accountant or auditor should uh, not disclose the information which has gathered uh, from the audit during audit process unless permitted by law or peer review so this confidentiality is also part of the first schedule and second schedule even in in first and second schedule this confidentiality has been um, narrated in first schedule uh, in in second schedule clause 1 it has been uh, stated that he should not disclose information about clients without clients consent except when required by law so this is in second schedule part 1 clause 1 and this will land you to the disciplinary committee and uh, grave consequences adverse consequences may follow for the chartered accountants now thereafter this professional behavior the professional behavior should be uh, very good like it should not bring discredit to the profession or self glorification or exaggerated claim which our my personal my previous uh, speaker said that in the case of website or social uh, web social uh, website and uh, social networking and youtube we should not uh, put any information or any which uh, uh, tantamount to self glorification or your uh, achievements etc or uh, your credentials etc exaggerated information or your superiority over the other chartered accountant or other auditors you should not uh, show off yourself and so that you are superior to others you uh, so it, or you should not do anything which is which brings discredit to the profession or the institution so these are the fundamental principles which have to be uh, observed by the um, chartered accountants or auditors then there is conceptual framework another aspect is the conceptual framework 
the conceptual framework means that he should be free and fearless so there should not independent he should not have any sort of he should be independent so how the ind independent can be compromised so independent con con can be compromised through th threats there are several threats to the independence so what are their threats self interest if the auditor wants that they should uh, retain this particular assignment at whatever cost because of the economical reasons then the self interest is uh, hit and he may tend to compromise with the uh, uh, with the <clears throat> if any any uh, any any issue is to be reported upon any adverse uh, ad, which is adverse against the oddity then he may tend to suppress that so there is self interest may compromise the independence then there is a self review so in the case of uh, chartered accountant when he is we he has advised some uh, uh, he he had done something some some earlier in the last year or two 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 three years back he has done some provided some services to the client and now as an auditor after that he has been appointed as auditor and that particular advice he has to review then he may tend to uh, uh, he may tend to ignore if any adverse features are there in that particular advice because that in 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 that he will be he will tend to be to uh, overlook because of self review so the independence will be compromised then the advocacy it may be that uh, the particular uh, chartered accountant has uh, uh, in in respect of any particular uh, issue he has uh, uh, he has strong views about uh, particular issue and then he may not uh, tend to uh, hear about the uh, issues about the uh, arguments which are against that so he may have a framework of a particular issue and he can he he becomes the advocate of that particular view so he tend to stick to that view and with that uh, stand in uh, taking place he can uh, compromise with the independence then the familiarity suppose an auditor is uh, auditor for last uh, say 10 years or 20 years so he becomes familiar and becomes hand in gloves with the management so he may tend to overlook any glaring uh, mistake in the accounts so that co may compromise due to that he may compromise the independence then there may be intimidation like we uh, heard earlier that uh, in some about uh, 30 years back there was murder of a chartered accountant article clerks in the bccl gp agarwal and company because they pointed out some mistakes in the accounts so there may be intimidate intimidation th threat uh, the chartered accountant may be uh, may be uh, scolded or may be uh, subjected to violence etc so he may Uh, that situation may uh, force him to compromise with the independence so all these are various threats which uh, have to be identified whether the existence of these threats are there and if the existence of these are th are th threats are there we this have to be identified these have to be evaluated then uh, uh, this to be uh, uh, addressed and how it can be addressed either it should be eliminated or some safeguard has to be taken against these threats and 
the auditor chartered accountant has to be diligent and uh, have uh, uh, judgmental uh, for uh, foresightedness and uh, he is he is to be uh, analytical the abreast of the information should be reasonable so these are the various uh, uh, matters which are required for independence of mind and uh, this framework the fundamental principle and conceptual framework is the basic uh, thing which is flowing throughout the code of ethics now in the code of ethics uh, gradually in part 2 part 2 of the code of ethics is about professional accountants in service now most of the things are uh, uh, continued with the um, um, around which revolves around this basic framework and fundamental principles uh आइए देवेंद्र जी पूरा सेमिनार चल रहा है Uh, about the code of ethics there are several guidelines issued by the institute uh, regarding advertisement our my previous speaker has already narrated oh. about the website ha oh. and uh, social networking bola the ho gaya tha kya up to date tally now i should uh, i would uh, narrate something about uh, this advertisement ICI guidelines. So particulars about in, in advertisements, uh, firms, firm services, and about the chartered accountant themselves, that can be presented in a decent manner. so that it maintains professional dignity and it should be true to the best of knowledge and belief uh and it does not bring disrepute to the profession and uh it advertisement should contain prescribed information our institute has prescribed the information what what information can be contained in an advertisement and there should be only prescribed information like name membership number age date of aca fca cop qualification telephone mobile fax professional address only professional address residential address is not required not needed if you give residential address then it will be professional misconduct then the no languages known can be given the email web passport size photo you have to give only passport size photograph if your legs will be visible in the photo then it will be professional misconduct then uh, the number of employees ca articles etc and the particulars of employees also can be given with the same information like your know, name registration number address working hours telephone mobile fax mail etc then manner manner uh, 
in the manner in the in in the advertisement guidelines of 2008 14 5 2008 the guidelines were issued the it states the manner includes manner of circulation includes circulation publication print or electronic media website in pull mode not in push mode pull pull mode means anybody who wants to know about you he has to click on some button it is not that uh, whenever he goes to your website the whole universe comes before his eyes he should not he should be only provided with the buttons so he will push the button and the relevant information will come to you you should not push your information before his eyes then you cannot claim superiority over other members and firms and indecent or sensational conduct should not be included so what is sensational conduct content it may uh, it is it may be controversial suppose a religious information is uh, may be controversial may be sensational content for somebody and for some it may be uh, very good content so now it depends i will just narrate one story when i was in chairman of the eirc in 2002 I had published one newsletter and in the front I, there was a Basant Panchmi was there and I, I published the photo of uh, Sarsati, Goddess Sarsati. And uh, then president uh, of the institute uh, pointed out uh, before, uh, that uh, this photo is not uh, uh, proper because this is this may arouse the, this may not be treated as secular. So for some, it may be sensational content, but some for some, it may be uh, heritage con content. So, but then advertisement uh, guidelines says that there should be no indecent or sensational content, and it should not bring disrepute to the profession. Now, there should be no testimonials, endorsement concerning members. There should be no violation of CA Act rules, regulations, Client's name cannot be given. Only the nature of services provided can be given. And the font size should not exceed 14. Like as we know in the legal petition, petitions, the font size is required to be 14. So in the treatment also, the font size cannot exceed 14. Then the membership number and firm registration number is mandatory. So whenever you advertise, you will not write just uh, CA Jayanarayan Gupta. You have to write the membership number. If you don't write membership number, then you will be booed for professional misconduct. Then <coughs> for letterheads and visiting cards also, there is a guidelines of uh, council in 280th meeting, 9-8-2002, the letterheads and visiting cards guidelines are there, but that is more of re relating to the uh, central council members and regional council members. So not nothing much has been written about the general members in that guidelines. Then the practice in corporate form. There are guidelines about the allowing the members to practice in uh, uh, corporate form. Earlier, it was not uh, allowed. Now, 261st meeting in 2006, the council reviewed the existing code of ethics, uh, which was earlier barring the full time PCA to be MD w, uh, and whole time director, managing director, whole time director. Now, director simpliciter, irrespective of shareholding, was allowed since 2006. Then, managing management consultancy was allowed, non audit services. Uh, for non-audit services, management consultancy in the corporate form was allowed for non-audit services as managing director and uh, uh, whole time director. Now, uh, but this management consultancy name has to be approved by the institute and that has to be applied to the institute about the name. 
uh, for uh, corporate form of practice, statutory and periodical audit, tax representation uh, are not allowed or they cannot uh, act as liquidator, trustee, executor, administrator, arbitrator, receiver, etc., which are uh, re uh, reserved for the individual members. And all the ceilings and restrictions relating to CA firms are, are also applicable to the corporate form of practice. And they have to uh, undertake to comply with the Six and seven means they six and seven of part one of first schedule that they cannot uh, solicit professional work and advertise any professional uh, uh, attainment. Then in 2008, Central Council uh, issued guidelines and which are being updated now and then. In that, as, as per that guidelines, employee CA shall exercise due diligence and not be negligent in duties. Practicing chartered accountants shall maintain books of account, including cash book and ledger. So all the chartered accountants have to maintain cash book and ledger and books of account. Then tax audit assignment under section 44AB should not be more than the prescribed number 60 per partner. But other sections are not included. It is tax audit under section 44AB only. Now, any undisputed audit fees, if it is pending, is non-paid, then the next year's audit cannot be taken because uh, the Code of Ethics states that if any unpaid uh, audit fees is there, and if you uh, conduct the audit, then it will be compromising the independence. Except in the case of sick companies who may be unable to pay. Now that there is the restriction with specified number of audit, audit assignments, 30 private and other companies. Now in this companies, in these 30 companies, one person company and dormant company, means strike of companies are not included. Now, uh, all the practicing chartered accountant have to record, have to maintain the record of assignment in the prescribed format. The fees of non-audit assignment of PSU companies or government company, listed company, company with turnover of 50 crore or more, not to exceed audit fees. So, fees cannot, can be, has to be less than 50 percent. Yes. Then if the auditor is indebted, auditor along with the relatives is indebted to the audity for more than one lakh, then he uh, he will be he cannot uh, he will be deemed to be professional misconduct. Then Udin has been introduced, networking guidelines have been introduced, logo guidelines have been introduced. So those are Udin guidelines is in appendix one of the I of the court. The networking is in appendix K of the code, logo is in appendix L of the code, and the corporate form of practice is in appendix D of the code. Regarding website, my previous speaker has already uh, narrated about the various do's and don'ts for the chartered accountants. So now, having stated this, now there are a lot of uh, discussion which is required on each clause of schedule one and two. For schedule one and two, 
if you want we can go each uh, clause wise but uh, i think it is it will be more uh, appropriate if we can talk in question answer mode because that will clarify because i can narrate but that will not be so if anyone has any kind of question they can ask the question post in the chat box sir is ready to take up all the questions in case regarding me disciplinary mechanism i would like to know, point out that whenever knowingly or unknowingly if you happen to be indulged in some sort of disciplinary uh, problems disciplinary mechanism you find yourself uh, trapped in disciplinary mechanism so what is the procedure in the procedure is that the, you will get a, info, a, a complaint copy of complaint from the institute disciplinary directorate director discipline will send you one letter in secretary of the disciplinary directorate will send you letter along with the copy of complaint and you will have to explain about your stand then that letter will be forwarded to the complainant he will give the rejoinder and that rejoinder will again send to you and you will also com comment in his rejoinder so like that the all readings will be completed all readings will be completed then if it is of first schedule then the director discipline will be uh, deciding the case whether it any disciplinary uh, prima facie opinion he will be forming prima facie opinion and uh, it will be decided whether there is any misconduct or not and if it is second schedule or first and second schedule both together then it will be uh, prima facie opinion will be formed by the director discipline and it will be uh, sent to the uh, dis disciplinary committee and disciplinary committee will hear the uh, complaint and find out whether there is any pro professional misconduct or not under which clause he has been he can be booked and after that there will be another hearing for fixation of punishment now after fixation of punishment you have 90 days to appeal before the appellate authority so suppose your name has been removed by the disciplinary committee for one year now you have got 90 days time to uh, appeal before the appellate authority now institute will not wait for 90 days there is no provision that uh, you uh, institute will wait for 90 days institute can forthwith uh, publish the notification for removal of name even if you have uh, applied to the uh, appellate authority for removal of uh, for stay of the punishment even then you will find that the institute has already published the notification for removal of name so for that you have to file the urgent hearing of the application now for stay also you have to find then the uh, institute before the publication of the notification you have to take so many so much work in haste and uh, provide uh, obtain the stay against the notification otherwise the notification will be published and there, thereafter uh, you will have only one uh, remedy to remove the stigma against you before the appellate appellate authority so appellate authority will now there thereafter hear your case so these are the things in, you will find that in some of the cases the disciplinary committee uh, has narrated something else and in concluded something else so there are there may be such things and there may be a time lag because the disciplinary committee consists of a vice president and several other members who may change when there is change of council or one year to two year second year third year so disciplinary committee hearings can go for two three years and in the meantime there will be change of constitution and the new committee 
although there is a recording of the hearings but the mindset and the thinking process it, it is a human behavior so that may change so all those things influence the outcome of the disciplinary committee so all those things are very relevant when uh, there are disciplinary mechanism and uh, so i just wanted to add that before the anybody can put any question sir we have a question from om prakash gupta if we give consultancy to company then do we need approval from the institute yes you can have consultancy company no no, no sir so, so the question get... is if we give consultancy to to company if we give consultancy to a company then do we need approval of the institute no, cons for consultancy you did not have uh, any approval from the uh, institute okay sir and the next question is is uh, it's allowed to issue no statutory due certificate is it allowed to issue a uh, no due certificate no i think no due certificate to whom statutory no due certificate no whatever as whatever information is available as per books of accounts for that you can give any sort of certificate okay so the next question is uh, whether, whether no due you yes. you cannot give a simple uh, no due certificate in simply simpliciter you have to provide the details also what are the payable amount and what is pay, paid amount and if whether any disputes or not and you have to give the whole information on facts in totality it has to be a detailed certificate yes it has to be detailed certificate it cannot be one liner okay sir so. so the next question is from uh, badrina jaji whether non completing of cprs and not having peer review certificate and carried out audit fall under any schedule of code of ethics or ci act if we don't complete cprs and are and we don't have a peer review certificate and if we carry out audit then does it fall under any schedule code of ethics cp for cp there is a guidelines and as already pointed out that any violation of guidelines of the institute is comes within the professional misconduct so that is about cp hours regarding peer review it is not mandatory so uh, if you don't have peer re review then you will be disentitled to be appointed as the auditor of listed companies or like that there are some disqualifications for being appointed as auditor Nachar Akhil ji is asking about the social media guidelines recently provided by ICI. I think uh, Asim's sir has already highlighted the points. But in case you have any additional point, you can please go ahead. Regarding social uh, social media guidelines recently provided by ICI, I think he is asking about any changes which have been. I would recently. advise only one thing: then don't put the name CA and. Use your social uh, media networking or social media freely with whatever content you want to in whatever manner. Only don't put the word CA or chartered accountant along with your name. That's all. Because our institute is very much particular about using the word CA. Even don't put the word CA on your car also, the logo on your car. Also, institutes allows it, but. God knows where the institute will put you the dis yeah, that you have dis uh -huh. brought disrepute to the professor because your car car may be found somewhere and somewhere someone will take the snap and it will uh, be construed as you have brought disrepute to the professor. So you should uh, use Mister, not C A, as Nitish Moore was saying that C A is substitute of Mister. It is not substitute of Mister. it is putting yourself in trouble maybe probable probable trouble so it is better to use mr work as ca but not use uh, don't call yourself as uh, in writing about ca this is my personal advice people may differ yes if you don't use the word ca then you are free you are safe uh, 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 uh.
गुप्ता जी बोलिए सर मैं बोल रहा था सपोज कर लिए जैसे आपने कहा कि पीयर रिव्यू नहीं ली भी है नो पीयर रिव्यू सर्टिफिकेट ऑप्टेन बट ऑडिट हैज बीन डन ऑफ एन लिस्टेड कंपनी डेट व्हाट आर द प्रोविजंस नो दैट इज मिसकंडक्ट ना इफ यू ऑडिट ऑडिट ऑफ एन लिस्टेड कंपनी डन बट पीयर रिव्यू हैज नॉट बीन ऑप्टेन देन व्हाट आर द दैट इज मिसकंडक्ट दैट इज मिसकंडक्ट बिकॉज़ दैट इज अ वायलेशन ऑफ द गाइडलाइंस then uh, uh, misconduct what are the provisions what are the penalties all these things see penalty is uh, depends upon the whether your case is before, before the director discipline or disciplinary committee and there are separate uh, provisions for uh, uh, this uh, uh, punishment if it is before director discipline then it is 3 months removal of the name and if it is for disciplinary committee then it is 1 year removal of the name and it may be even permanent removal of the name also if it is disciplinary committee okay 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 ram and ram and as anyone non any observance of the guidelines falls within second schedule so it is within the purview of the disciplinary committee and you your name may be permanently removed from the register of members तो सर इसका कंसिक्वेंस कोई सिर्फ उस पार्टनर पर पड़ता है या पूरी फॉर्म पे पड़ता है जितना भी डिस्प्लिनरी मैकेनिज्म है या जो भी इंस्टीट्यूट का जो गाइडलाइंस वगैरह सब ऑल आर इंडिविजुअल ऑल आर बेस्ड ऑन इंडिविजुअल नाउ देयर इज अ प्रपोजल दैट फॉर्म शुड बी ब्रॉट टू बुक्स ऑल द पार्टनर शुड बी सेवरली एंड इंडिविजुअली लाइबल बट टिल नाउ only member is the liable sir so i think we don't have any more questions uh, in case you have any closing remarks you can go ahead with that and and after that uh, we can end the session by 2 pm my closing remarks is that you have to you should go through the first schedule and second schedule and like uh, uh, hanuman chalisa you should write uh, first schedule and second schedule at least once in a week and you should keep that first and second schedule in mind and you try to avoid the use of the word ca and chartered accountant at least when there is a non professional work if it is professional work then of course you can use the word ca and... but when it is non professional work then don't use this word because that may land you problem anywhere un unaware you are you may not be aware that you are landing in problem गुप्ता जी एक एग्जाम्पल बताता हूं आपको प्रैक्टिकल चीज है जैसे अपने जूम में मीटिंग अभी अटेंड कर रहे हैं यहां मैंने लिखा सीए मनोज कुमार मोदी अपनी आइडेंटिटी थी अब कोई सोशल भी कोई प्रोग्राम है जो जूम में हो रहा है उसमें भी सेम जूम की आइडेंटिटी में चला गया सीए मनोज कुमार मोदी लिख करके और वहां पर मान लीजिए किसी के साथ में कोई बहस हो और भाई साहब ने उसको रिकॉर्ड किया इसका कहीं भी कोई कंसिक्वेंस हो सकता है अरे सर इसीलिए तो बोलता हूँ मत करिए सर where you are sure that nothing but only professional work will be or professional discussion will be held only there you can use the word ca otherwise don't use the word ca matlab zoom mein bhi meeting kare to dhyan rakhe ki ca ko hata de aap ca aap bhul jaiye ki aap ca hain jahan pe jor to wahi par use kariye bhaiya wahi par use kare ha but sir ye to apna लेकिन वो लोग मर्डर लोग का मर्डर लोग का केस करते हैं कोर्ट में आप करके देखिए आप किसी का केस करके देखिए पहले आपको अंदर लेके जाएगा एडवोकेट लोग तो मर्डर का केस करते हैं लेकिन आप वो नीरव मोदी के साथ में होते हैं ना तो नीरव मोदी को तो बाद में लेके जाता वो तो बाहर भाग रहा है भाग पहले आपको लेके जाता अंदर 
ठीक बात है तो वो आप आप अपने को कंपेयर मत करिए कि वो डी लिखता है तो मैं भी सी लिखू वो एडवोकेट ए लिखता है तो मैं भी सी लिख दू हम लोग का इंस्टीट्यूट का वो जो अभी बॉम्बे में हुआ था ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड काउंसिल ऑफ अकाउंटेंट्स उसमें चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट लोग का वो था स्टॉल था फर्स्ट टाइम इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट लोग का स्टॉल था और वही फिर यहाँ पर हुआ विश्व बांग्ला में वहां पर हिम्मत नहीं हुआ परमिशन भी नहीं दिया उसको स्टॉल लगाने का चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट लोगों को तो इंस्टीट्यूट एक जगह पे कैसे करता है दूसरे जगह पे कैसे करता है वो उसका एडोक बेसिस पे सब चलता है इंस्टीट्यूट सारा काम एडोक बेसिस पे चलता है इसीलिए आप ज्यादा कंट्रोवर्सी में मत जाइए अपना काम करिए ज्यादा उसका वो कब क्या करता है उसमें जाएंगे तो अपना खाना कमाने वाला जो प्रोफेशन है उसमें उसमें माथा लगाना सब छोड़ देंगे तो इसीलिए प्ले सेफ थैंक यू गुप्ता जी थैंक यू नीतीश मोर जी अरे सर सर नीतीश मोर जी हंस रहे हैं कि मैंने बहुत कुछ इंस्टीट्यूट का अगेंस्ट में बोल दिया है नहीं नहीं अगेंस्ट तो अगेंस्ट कुछ नहीं है जो मैं हम, हम लोग बहुत रहे हैं वो ही बोल रहा हूँ एंड आई हैव गॉट एविडेंसेस वट एवर वट एवर सिंगल थिंग आई हैव अटर्ड इट मे बी इट मे लुक लाइक आई एम गोइंग अगेंस्ट द इंस्टीट्यूट बट इट इज नॉट लाइक आई हैव गॉट एविडेंस ऑफ द फैक्ट ऑफ द केस I am not making bald statements. Okay, sir. Nitesh, can can we, can we end the session by giving him a vote of thanks, or yeah. do you have something yeah. in addition? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, uh, if uh, no question left, if there is any question left, members may unmute or post post their questions in the question box. Otherwise, we can end. Uh, Yes, sir. All the questions have already been answered. Yes, yes, yes. So, I think uh, uh, we can uh, uh, end by the uh, heartfelt, yes. heartfelt vote of thanks to the our past chairman, sir. Jain Gupta, sir, has enlightened us on ethics, disciplinary provisions, and uh, sir is very vocal in all his approach and has explained to us by way of so many examples, so much relevant to each and every member. more than 250 members have gained from him i thank ca sir to on on behalf of each and every participant looking forward for more such meetings with you sir and i thank each and every participant for participating in this seminar and i request all of them to subscribe to our youtube channel to get more and more professional and educational videos thank you so much sir and also i would request everybody to kindly uh 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 today or tomorrow we will be releasing this uh, budget uh, link of the budget seminar so kindly avail the early bird and uh, join the register for the budget seminar uh, that is on 2nd of february at kala mandir and uh, register for the large in large number we will be giving 80 90 page uh, budget uh, booklet also for uh, in this program that is on 2nd february from 3:30 to 7:30 Jawar sir, Jawar sir, would you like to say something? आप कुछ बोलना चाह रहे हैं तो if you can unmute or answer. Live तो हटा दो ना इससे YouTube से और recording भी stop कर दो. हम्म live भी हटा दो. ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरीवन आई थिंक वी कैन एंड द सेशन ओके सर